Yeah, it's it's funny uh, that you mentioned GBR because uh, our next question is specifically about that. So obviously, um, for those that do not know what GDPR is, I'll just give a brief explanation, but I'm sure you guys can go much more in depth. But GDPR is basically a general data protection regulation, which is basically the set of laws given by the European Union about around privacy and security in data, um, which all organizations that collect data from uh, people in Europe need to need to follow. Um, and specifically, what, what I wanted to ask you is can you explain how privacy threat modeling relates to GDPR uh, and also uh, getting a bit more technical with it, how does it relate to the privacy by design and privacy by default paradigms which GDPR uh, uh, wants to incentivize? Uh, maybe Aram, you can start. Okay, uh, well, like pr actually privacy and, and security, let's call it just threat modeling, security or privacy, I don't know, uh, let's call it privacy and security threat modeling. It essentially tackles, uh, it essentially solves the, those things from GDPR, as you mentioned, privacy by design, privacy by default, as well as uh, a section on the technical measures and the technical countermeasures. Now, unfortunately, GDPR is a legislation written by legal experts who are creating what they do, but no offense, they have not a single clue about software development. They have not a single, they, I don't have the impression that they do understand the difference between security and privacy. And just throwing in this nice word, privacy by design probably seemed uh, cool, but it doesn't mean anything. Um, and so pr privacy by design is a buzzword meant to encourage and require thinking about privacy properties before actually developing the software. Uh, and I would say from there on, there are two approaches. Uh, either you go a checklist based approach, which is not a bad idea, but again, checklists may become impossible to manage. Although you could start always with checklists or you can actually go and do a privacy threat modeling, uh, which is a mathematical analog for proving by contradiction. So the purpose is to find a contradiction uh, and then you know, okay, then there is a privacy threat. So this is not okay. And yeah. That, that's more or less uh, what I wanted to say, but I, I'm not sure GDPR works, to be honest. Uh, and recently I had a personal experience. I get more and more calls by random people trying to sell me stuff. I always wonder where the hell do they get my phone number? So I did a Google search and apparently there there is this firm called Rocket something, Rocket Launch, Rocket Space. Um, well, it's a firm who sells data, it gives it even free. Uh, data of uh, everybody who is leading an organization. And they had like all my phone numbers across the years that I ever had. And I've searched more. Uh, and apparently the Luxembourg data protection authorities have flagged those guys already. Uh, and I've said, yeah, they are in violation of the GDPR, but we're not going to do anything about it. That, that's my personal experience with the legislation. Ideally, though, Threat modeling solves that. It is the thing that you should use to to make sure that you're. I don't want to say compliant, but to make sure that you play by the rules. Yeah, yeah. So Adam mentioned it before. It, it has like this one sentence saying you need to implement appropriate technical measures, but to determine what are appropriate technical measures and it's it's very vague so that's where where threat modeling is really really useful um i i do want to add i i don't know if i remember the the, the quote by heart but i i, I uh, read somewhere uh, recently that privacy is uh not a legal implication uh, a legal obligation that has technical implications but it's actually a data problem that has legal um implications so the idea is the goal is to build a secure and a privacy aware system and to force people to do it. Now you have GDPR and other legislations that, well, yeah, that kind of force you. And if you don't do that, then there might be a fine or, or some consequence whatsoever. So what the I'm, I'm an academic, so I can be idealistic. But the, the whole idea is that an organization should ideally have that that general culture of wanting to do it in a secure and privacy friendly way anyways 
and and by doing that that compliance part is basically kind of covered and that's much better than just tackling it from the the checkbox compliance kind of way where you say well okay let's see privacy okay check because i have some consents for newsletters and and i i updated my privacy policy and look i found this obscure pet that we implement at the end of our life cycle so we have some pseudonymization of some of the data it's really implementing it at the core of the system and and at the foundation but that being said well people are typically still looking for gdpr compliance and and indeed threat modeling there is a, is a great step because it's also risk based similar to gdpr which has like a lot of times i don't i think it was 75 times i don't know i think we counted it once um so it's a it's it's really risk oriented same as 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 threat modeling but then from a technical perspective hey!